Hey voters, it's Jim from Raymarine Live. And uh, today we are talking first responder sonar and I'm here with Tom Patassi from our Raymarine team. How are you today, Tom? Good, Jimmy, how are you doing? Pretty good. So sonar, obviously a very important tool for first responders. Um, what product are most responders using these days from Raymarine? So most of the uh, first responder core out there today is using our Axiom Pro product. Okay. It's, uh, it's got the built-in um, real vision sounder uh, as well as a, a 1KW channel. Okay. So there's a lot of options built into the unit for the first responders. All right. So something like we got here, this is a, an Axiom Pro. Uh, slide it over a little bit to see the keypad. Yep. Uh, but this is pretty typical of what we're seeing on a lot of fast response boats, fire yes. boats, that sort of thing. Yep. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about the sonar channels that we have on one of these Axiom displays uh, and what they're best used for. Um, so to help us out with this, we've actually got one of these uh, units here in the studio uh, connected up through the miracle of the internet. Um, so let's start with this split window that we're looking at here. What do we got for sonar channels in this display, Tom? So the actual uh, Axiom Pro display has, uh, as we said, five built-in channels. Four of those are in the what we call the real vision. Um, and that's going to be side vision, which we have in our large panel on the left. Okay, so this guy over here. Traditional sonar, which would be top right. Okay, yep, over here. And below that, we have our down vision. Down vision. Yep. So you can customize these displays to build, uh, you know, a myriad of pages. You can have two, three, four windows. Um, this is a really good window to choose, though, this three-way with the sonar, uh, the down vision, the side vision. Uh, as the guys are out in the field doing search and rescue, search and recovery, this is really the bread and butter page. It's going to show them um, everything that they're looking for. You okay. Know, and, and hopefully put them on the on the money for what they're looking for. Absolutely. So kind of starting with, um, let's look at the side vision panel first and just talk a little bit about what we actually see here. So I see it's scrolling top to bottom uh, down the display. Um, so what is this white line right down the middle? So that's actually the center of the boat. Uh, and the way the side vision is designed, the way the transducer uh, transmits the, the uh, um, sounder, uh, frequencies out, um, there is a blind spot underneath the boat on the side vision, and it's it's there by design. Okay. Because the way the uh, transducer is angled, it's designed to kind of go out in a almost like a triangle shape. Okay. From the bottom of the boat, um, and be able to transmit port and starboard uh, to whatever distance you have it set up on. All right, and it looks like we're on uh, about a hundred and fifty foot range scale here. Right. I can see that from the numbers across the top. So mm -hmm. that is seventy five feet. Uh, that's 150 feet actually out at the edge. Right. And basically that would put about a 50 foot area under the boat there that we're not seeing on that side vision. Okay. And if I wanted to see what was in that blind spot, then what channel do we use for that? So uh, good question. Great lead in. And, and ironically, the down vision channel um, is really what fills in that empty spot on the side vision. If you if you factored it out in the math, there's about a 60 degree um, field of view on the down vision. And ironically, that blind spot in the sonar is 60 degrees. Okay. So when you couple all those together, we actually give you a full 180 degrees of viewability when looking at those um, images together. And I like looking at it this way because most of us are used to looking at a traditional sonar page. Uh, when you are using what I like to call the imaging side, which would be the down vision, the side vision, and the 3D, having that conical sonar to refer back to just kind of uh, keeps people kind of lined up as to as to what's what and understanding those, you know, the cone angle and what is actually uh, inside of that, what the transducer is actually showing you. Um, you can see on the on the sonar and the down vision, those pictures are going to be identical. Uh, now, on on this particular view of the of the simulator that we have here, unfortunately, these all three are not lined up. But in the real world, obviously, uh, you know, if there was that rock pile or that pile of bait and fish that we're seeing scrolling across the screen now, uh, you know, you would see that either down the center or to the port and then to the starboard as it went through the picture. Okay. And looking at that sonar screen up on the top right, so that is um, a round or conical shaped beam, right? So that's directly under the boat. Yep. Uh, it's 
fairly narrow. What is that around 20 degrees or so? It's actually a 25 degree. 25, okay. Yep. And um, there's a feature that you can actually turn on to kind of help you out to, to understand how much of the bottom you're seeing. So um, if you wouldn't mind from the menu, if you went into the sonar, yep, and you hit menu and then come down to the settings page. Settings is always these gear icons, okay. Right. And we're gonna go to the A scope and you're gonna turn on to the cone. I like the cone. A scope cone, oh yeah, look at that. Now what happens there is you see that there is a now a little cone pushed over on the right side of the display and there's a number in there. Um, now we don't have a depth overlay put up here, but if you look at the sonar itself, we're in about 28 feet of water. Um, and ironically, that cone is about half of your depth. It's a, a down and dirty number, it's not exact, but it's a, just a quick and easy math to say, okay, I'm in 10 feet of water, I'm roughly looking at five feet of the bottom. Okay. You know, 20 feet of water, roughly looking at 10 feet. So yeah, it's important to understand how far you can actually see in any given direction. Yes. So what are all those colors that we see kind of underneath the bottom. Like I'm guessing this is the, the line of the ocean bottom here. Mm -hmm. and we got all this noise underneath it. What's that all about? Yeah, um, you know, as the sonar is, is pushing down, it gets to the bottom and then there's just kind of like that, like you say, it's a little noise. And there is actually a way to get rid of that to make the sonar a little cleaner to look at. Okay. So if again, you went back into the menu. Yeah, menu. Um, back down to the gears or the, the settings. Okay. Uh, there's a feature called bottom fill, and if you turn that on, you're gonna notice that anything below the bottom just magically disappears and it becomes much cleaner and much easier to interpret that, okay, that's where the bottom is. Now, there's actually one other little step you can do to give you an indication of actually what kind of bottom you're in. Okay. Um, and if you go back into that menu, there's another uh, setting that we kind of scrolled by earlier, it's called white line. And if we look at that white line, when you turn it on, Jim, and we'll stay in the menu here for a second, you notice that above the white line, you do see a little bit of the solid red and then some of the returns coming up off the bottom. Okay, yep. That would indicate to me that it's a, a relatively solid bottom. You know, there might be just a teeny bit of, of sediment on the bottom itself, which is normal but it's not a very silty bottom that you might find like in a river system. Okay. Um, if that was the case, anything above that white line would be a little bit thicker, a little, a, a little, uh, you know, um, more material above that white line. And that would just kind of give you an indication that there's definitely a softer, siltier bottom. I guess that would make a big difference if you're looking for an, an object or a Sure. Because as something falls into the bottom, you know, um, how long has it been there? Is the current going to kind of wash some of that silt over the top of it? You know, what's it going to look like on the sonar? So, yeah, definitely the bottom contour makes a big difference. All right. Well, that's good to know. So we can turn that off. All right. So we'll flip these off. White line. And then we just hit the X up here. And we're back out at our main display. Yep. So um, looking at the side vision and the down vision, I notice that we have quite a strong echo here right at the edge. I think this is where the sonar beam actually hits um, the river bottom or the lake bottom or the ocean bottom. Um, sometimes there can be targets in there. Uh, is there any kind of tuning we can do to make that a little bit clearer? There is actually. Um, if you select onto the side vision page, okay. in the lower left, you see the three kind of- Like the graphic, graphic equalizer. Link. Yes, exactly. We're going <laughs> yeah. back into the 70s. Um, but if you click on that, you're going to come up with a couple of settings. There's the gain, intensity, and then there's the police and fire button, the alt to auto. Alt so to if, you, auto. if you make a mistake, you kind of just click on that and it, it brings you back to- uh, oh, Yeah, look at that. To, to the home kind of scenario. You can't scenario. break it. You can't <laughs> break it. Um, but the intensity is really the one we want to be looking at here. And, um, you know, normally we always kind of want to add stuff to enhance things. Actually, in this case, sometimes decreasing that intensity can darken up that- for leading edge, right about there, as you see, that dark, that leading edge kind of darkened itself up a little bit. And if there were some targets in there, it's going to make that much easier to, to, to see those targets. Yeah, it's definitely taking that white edge off of it and um, yeah, it makes it much more visible. Yeah, and you can, you know, play with that um, up and down to, you know, whatever your viewing pleasure is on that. Um, there is also the capability, Jimmy, to, to change the background colors and the sonar colors on all of this stuff. Okay. So as you go into the menu and change those colors, um, 
you know, some of those colors, you can add a little bit more gain. Some colors you take a little, away a little bit of gain. It's really personal preference on the colors. Okay. And um, here's all the color palettes here. Yep. So it's really whatever, uh, you know, you think is the, the best viewing for your conditions, whether it's, you know, daytime, nighttime, whether you need glasses, you know, wh whatever it might be. Great. Yeah. There's a lot of different options in here. And the best thing you can really do with these is try them out. Um, see what works best for your conditions. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. So, um, I'll put back it back to, yeah, put it back to where it was to start back to, with back to the copper there. So, so when, um, when we're looking at a side vision image in particular, like this one here, um, you mentioned before that the beams kind of project out from the side of the boat and you've got a blind spot underneath it. Correct. So if I'm looking for something on the bottom with side vision, I don't want to come right over the top of that target, do I? No, you don't. Correct. You, you definitely don't. Um, you know, you had said earlier, we're shot out to about 150 feet here. So it is important to understand that that kind of black line uh, in the side vision is roughly 50 feet wide right now at this particular setting. That's going to increase or decrease as you zoom in or out or you range in or out to that on um, the side vision. So knowing that that you're at least 50 feet from the, the, the center of the boat right there to the object, you really want to make sure that you're a little farther away than you anticipate from that object so that the beams can actually, you know, paint that image for it per se for you. So, um, you know, a hundred feet away at this range would probably be really, you know, 75 to hundred would be very much an optimal range. Um, but a lot of people miss these things in the side vision and that's why, because they're just a little bit too close. So it's really important in any of the search and rescue operations that they're doing out there that, um, you actually do multiple passes. Okay. You know, um, I want to make a pass at different ranges from the target. Um, but it's also equally important to make those passes at different angles on the target because depending upon what that target is and how it's sitting up off the bottom uh, is, is how visible that target may or may not be. Okay. Um, I think we've got a pretty good example of this and uh, we'll put the screenshot up now uh, and take a look at it. Um, so this is, why well, it's a wreck of a, crane isn't it it is it's a crane wreck down in um, niantic bay close to home and you can see that in this image the um the boat is off of the waypoint off of the wreck okay um and you can see i'm kind of you know headed in a northwesterly direction here um and i know because i've been over this thing 250 times that i can come over this from a different direction and at, and different ranges and the, the the wreck isn't as visible at those ranges and at, at those angles. So um, angle of approach and direction of approach are, are very important things. If you see what we're going to, you know, quote unquote, a target of interest, it's very important to put a waypoint on it. We'll show you how to do that momentarily. Um, and then come back and approach that target from different angles and different ranges so that you get your best um uh, you know, view of that target and you, you get the best resolution on it. Yeah, I guess it's important to understand that the way that the sonar works is we're basically bouncing some sound energy off of that object on the bottom and we're measuring the echo that's coming back. Right. So depending on what the object down there is made of, what angle it's at to the sensors on the boat, yeah, from different directions, you can get a completely different looking picture. And once you kind of figure out what that optimum angle is, then you can make multiple passes back and forth and really get some amazing photographic detail of it with right. sonar. So there's actually two features that Raymarine has that I don't believe anybody else has um, that really make it really beneficial for the first responder. The first is we can put a waypoint on it, right? Okay. So um, anywhere on the screen, you can just touch and hold and you will actually get a waypoint that will pop up. For example, maybe so, I want to mark this piece of structure here. And you just hit add waypoint. Add waypoint. And then the X is just the, the default symbol, but you could put anything you want there. So we'll just put the X for now. So you can see that the, the waypoint pops up. At the bottom of the screen, you can also see that there's a slider. Um, we actually have 10 minutes of historical data that's saved on the sonar. And nowhere is it as important as a first responder because if there is a target that you saw and you threw a waypoint on it, but you really didn't think that was kind of an important target, and then all of a sudden it's later in the day and you go through the list and the other, all the other targets came up empty, you, you know, it's important maybe to be able to re refresh back to that mm -hmm. um, and look at it. And, you know, uh, again, it only, it's only there 10 minutes, but it's, it's something that you could rewind and look at 
And as important, when you're doing that rewind and, and look, you can actually adjust the intensity and the gain to enhance that target to present uh, in, in the best image that it can give you. That is a pretty cool feature, yeah. So when the system records that historical information, it remembers all the parameters that were in play when it was recorded. So yeah, you can use all those controls as if you were live over the target still. Right. And uh, yeah, possibly expose a little more information that maybe you couldn't see uh, previously. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So I noticed when I dropped a waypoint on there, and I'm gonna do another one, um, I'm gonna mark this piece of structure again, add a waypoint. Um, and I noticed it synchronizes it too. So I get a waypoint um, on my side vision. I see the same spot on my down vision. Here it is on my sonar. And I assume I would get that in 3D as well. You do, and you actually get it in one more spot. Ah, You get it on the chart. Oh, most important of all. Most important of all, so you can actually get back to it. Um, you know, if if when you're out there doing a search and rescue, search and recovery scenario, uh, obviously tide, uh, wind, tide, set and drift are always going to be, you know, a, a, an ongoing factor for you. Um, when you're trying to, to figure that out, if you're not doing, you know, a sector search or something and you haven't figured out the set and the drift, uh, applying a couple of waypoints um, may be able to help you say, hey, look, all these waypoints all of a sudden have lined up southwest or northeast or, you know, whatever the direction might be. And that can give you a quick down and dirty indication of, hey, that's that's kind of my set and drift here. OK. And and maybe my next pass ought to be, you know, a little farther down in that direction. Just just kind of, you know, compute all that stuff very quickly in your head. Um, it gives you the ability to, to you know, have all the information kind of add up together for you. Okay. So there's definitely some powerful tools in the system. And, you know, I guess the best advice of all is, you know, when, when you're out there just on a routine patrol and there's nothing really going on, you know, practice, practice. Yeah. Play with yeah. the system. The more you interact with it, uh, the better off uh, you'll be in the, in the long run. And when you do actually get to a real scenario or on an actual scene, um, you'll have some familiarity with the tools. Definitely. All right. Well, thanks for watching today. This is just kind of a uh, little snapshot of some of what this system can do. Um, if you have questions or comments, certainly drop them in uh, down below. Uh, we will uh, provide answers here. And of course, if you have uh, questions about your Raymarine gear that um, you have on your agency's boat or you're interested in getting Raymarine gear on your agency's boat, certainly reach out to us and uh, we will get you connected with the right people. So with that, thanks for watching and uh, keep in touch for future installments in our Raymarine first responder series. Thanks.